You have no idea how excited we were at the Royal Academy of Dance when today's guest walked into the building. We squeaked, we gushed, we whooped. I may even have broken out in jazz hands. But how often do you meet a choreographer who occupies that sweet spot between RAD ballet training, super serious contemporary dance, Kylie and the year's hottest movie. Today it happened. Our guest is Jennifer White, the choreographer of a little film called Barbie. I'm David Jays and this is a special episode of Why Dance Matters, the Royal Academy of Dance podcast. But what's that? You say you've been living under a rock. Let me explain. Barbie is a film by Greta Gerwig, which propels the iconic dolls, Barbie and Ken, from their blissfully artificial paradise into the perplexing real world. For me, part of the buzz around Barbie is the idea that, alongside its many other candy pink pleasures, people are enjoying large-scale deliriously imagined dance sequences. Early in the film, Margot Robbie's Barbie throws what she calls a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and planned choreography. And at its climax, a sublimely daft Ryan Gosling and his fellow Kens dance out their confusion. Jennifer has done much more, of course. Other films, like the eerie Last Night in Soho. She's worked with pop royalty, like Kylie and Adele. And with Ron Bear, Hoffa Schechter and Sidi Labi Chikawi. And young Jennifer did R.A.D. Ballet, confirming, as I think we'd always suspected, that Barbie is R.A.D. trained. Jennifer, welcome to Why Dance Matters. We are so excited, so excited. And I have to ask first the question that a huge part of the world population is asking at this moment, which is, how do you choreograph Barbies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're quite limited in well, their actual the doll. <laughs> yeah, because I love it when people explore what ballerina Barbie can do or tennis player Barbie can they do a backhand can they do swan leg they really can't so how do you capture the Barbiness? well I think early on hi as well it's nice to be here <laughs> so nice to meet you early on Greta was very clear that she didn't want it to be limited to what the dolls can do but in the sort of Barbie land where everything is perfect and no one has any doubts, any shame, any consciousness like of their body, everything's got that presentation as a performer would. So that was kind of what we took from it. And then otherwise, the limitation on the limbs and the joints, we kind of stayed away from. And I think Greta in her mind was thinking, it would be cool for a while, but for a whole film, people get tired of it. And there will be a one point where someone falls out of Barbie movement track, it will look obvious. So it kind of kept that performance directual body language yeah. yeah but at the same time you do throw in some quite nice things like the relatively stiff swingy arm swingy thing arms. Yeah. that uh, you could imagine yeah, a plastic doll it's true. doing and actually that kind of fell in sort of by accident to suit Barbie because Greta was saying oh, the move for the dance has to feel like when you're like a child and you're just sort of feeling so free and boundless and nobody's judging you or you think no one's judging you, you're not aware of that. So then all those sort of swingy motions were much more liberating and expressive to the max, like as big as you can go and swing those arms as wide as you could go. But it does fit the limb joint that kind of haphazardly like connected. I shouldn't say that probably, but it wasn't so thought out is much more about the sensation and the feeling of what she wanted a Barbie 
who doesn't feel limited in her world, how she would dance. And one of the things that is really very cool about the movie from a dance perspective is that actually the two big dance scenes kind of are the story of the film. There's the, I love this phrase, the, a giant blowout party <laughs> yeah. with all the Barbies and planned choreography. <laughs> That's you, your yeah. planned choreography, Jennifer, which is kind of where her awakening starts and she starts to question her world. And then a huge dance scene for all the Kens, which is, this is my new favourite phrase, Kenography. Yes, I've only just learned. Yes. Beautiful phrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Towards the end of the film, maybe we don't want to give too many spoilers, but it is... An all-male dance scene, which starts off in quite patterned ways, becomes quite emotional. How did you approach yeah. that? And so, yeah, similar, like you're saying, with the Barbie dance and having that emotional journey, Ryan's emotional journey from having this fight on the beach, this ridiculous fight on the beach, where then he tries to resolve it through dance and the emotional feeling within that that without words and for all these men to kind of move together and hug each other and pull each other up, like such union, was a really crucial thing. So, yeah, they both had their stories inside the dance, which I think in movies, if they're not musicals, they have to really tell that and there has to have relevance. Otherwise, the big people will be like, why is this dance in here? Yes. But <laughs> both of them were so relevant in that sense. And both Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie, they're, we know from other movies, really diamond sharp physical performers. But that's not necessarily the same as dancing planned choreography. How easy was it to work with them to kind of get them to both be those really blazing individual performances, yeah. but fit the ensemble. Absolutely. Yeah, they both obviously had previous experience and Margot definitely came and she was so fast. I mean, her brain was like a dancer's brain and she was checking like the and counts and specific moments that only dancers would see and understand. So I was really blown away with her. And she was just having the best time. <laughs> Ryan, I think he was also fully aware if he didn't play his Ken right, it wouldn't read. And he also knew that if he wasn't confident in what he was doing, it wasn't going to like tell the story. So he was slightly more nervous, but we worked together. We found movements together that he thought were hysterical and kind of made sense to him looking ridiculous actually it was more like I need to look more ridiculous I shouldn't look cool then when we got to his Ken dance by that point he'd done the blowout party so he was fully on board and I think he'd shot a lot more things and understood his Ken and so yeah he was incredible I mean it's like I think he's done interviews where he says he had to bring the seven-year-old back to him you know the one there's all these videos flying around of him in hammer pants in these purple <laughs> hammer pants so I think he had to like connect to that guy again to oh. yeah which was beautiful yeah because I think we all lose track of our child in us and I think it's so nice to reconnect they did incredible <laughs> and you mentioned Greta Gerwig the director who loves her movie references and people have spotted bits of the red shoes and the gene kelly mgm musicals and greece are you also a bit of a research nerd when I it comes am. to that i think what i researched what she told me and on sunday or saturday i can't remember she would hold a screening in notting hill at the electric for all the cast and crew to come and watch musicals that she or films that she was inspired by and kind of had relevance to what she was choosing That's so, so nice. that was really cool and i kind of missed that it was like a really nice little like thing to do on like 10 a.m on i think a saturday morning even if i wasn't she really like gathered everyone together to go let's go and watch singing in the rain i think it was umbrellas of sherborg yeah and many more but okay. yeah and were you trying to take particular moments to reference them or were you was it a general kind of vibe what were you looking for it was more a vibe. Obviously, the sets had so much to do with it. And then when Mark Ronson's music arrived, that was just completely enough. So I think I kind of 
subliminally take in things, but then I always improvise to the music. Me and my associate, Lisa, we just play around for a while and pick things that we liked and didn't like. I never want to take steps, but I think it happens. Some things in the blowout party where it's obviously like a Backstreet Boys type punching down and jumping into second. But I always want to try and find my own moves somehow. (laughs) And were you... Jennifer, were you a Barbie girl? Were there Barbies plural? There was Cindy. Cindy. I don't know why. I had a Cindy and a Barbie, but Cindy was definitely, like, cuter. (laughs) I don't know. Her hair was more shiny. I think Barbie's hair. I don't know what Barbie I got, but she had, like, this, like, massive, like, blonde hair that I could never comb, and I could never, like, put hair bands in, and it was... (laughs) But, yeah, she... I had More of a helmet. Yeah. (laughs) But I had them and I had a hand-me-down white Ferrari, which I absolutely loved. Get you. And I didn't know it was a hand-me-down till maybe a month ago when my mum was like, oh, yeah, I was lucky I found that in the, the car boot sale or something. <laughs> and I thought I'd hit gold when I was younger. I was like, wow, my mum loves me. <laughs> but, yeah, I actually was a bit obsessed. I didn't have a Ken. I had a thing for cars. Right. So, yeah, that was. Oh, so Barbie for me. and her Ferrari. And Ferrari was like, wow, this she's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and what was young Jennifer like? When did dance enter the mix? Probably just like my mum put a music on, and the kitchen, honestly, the kitchen holds like a real sacred dance space. I love dancing in the kitchen, I still do it. And even on Barbie, like I would prep in my kitchen and then bring it to the studio and have recorded it in my kitchen. So me and my mum dancing in the kitchen was a real point. And then she took me to a school called Collective Dance and Drama, which was in Rickmansworth where we lived. And it was five minute walk. It was super easy. We kind of look back and go how convenient it all was. And I had yeah incredible teachers there that some are still there, I think. We had a show every year and just got fully into it. I had quick changes, side of stage. It was all so fun. And yeah, it was never like scary or never serious, serious. It was all social and just the fun of it all. So yeah, I think that's where it all began. And you did RAD ballet? <laughs> yes. We're delighted to say, as you are in <laughs> yeah. the RAD's <laughs> London yeah. <laughs> building. <laughs> And you're talking about the fun, which is really lovely. But at the same time, as we know, dance training, you've got to be serious about it. You've got to be dedicated. You've got to practice and practice and practice and not mess about. Was it easy to keep the joy of it? Yeah, I remember a point I was feeling, well, I think probably when I got into Romba and it got to like the end of the second year, I was working so hard and I knew this was exactly where I should be and wanted to do all of this. But until that point, when I heard people like auditioning and sending off emails and resumes and I was like, oh, wow, yeah, this is it. Like, this is now the fight. What do I really want to do? How am I going to navigate myself? The physical doing classes and training was so natural and it never felt competitive. But when it got to like realizing we're going to have to actually do auditions and put yourself out there and graft in that way I was like okay I need to get my management head on (laughs) which I'd never done before and my mum was always the one to like push me here and there and then it was fully up to me and I really love your career Jennifer because there's contemporary dance there's pop there's casually the hottest movie of the summer (laughs) (laughs) all these things you could have gone in lots of different Different directions directions. and what's amazing (laughs) is that you have gone in all those directions all at once but when you started was there a plan what did you expect from your dance career I honestly I thought I would go to Romba and after Romba school, I thought I would be in Romba for 10 years and that would probably be serious be modern, modern choreography. Yeah. But that was because I love Christopher Bruce. I loved his work, the storytelling of his work. Because it was central to Romba at it that time, It really wasn't was. It? And that's sort of what I grew up with. 
And so things did change and choreography changed. And I actually did struggle to work out what I wanted to do. And I enjoyed working in contemporary dance a lot. I just knew there's a part of my personality that wanted to be a bit more frivolous and a bit more silly and just for fun, which is probably the child in me. And so I'm so grateful I managed to find avenues to tick those boxes. And even I did some burlesque, which was honestly one of my favorite jobs. How yeah, was that? It was so good. It was called a Hurley Burley show in West End. And it was just such fun. So I feel like par like singing in a musical. I done a fair array of jobs (laughs) (laughs) and from the outside they all look really different i love on um, your website the little bio says oh yeah she's worked with hoffa schechter and kylie like they're you know it's a natural progression (laughs) (laughs) yeah like they're neighbors (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) who doesn't just go from one to the other but i mean do all of those different styles feed each other or is it a completely different skill set when you move from one world to another I actually think it's completely different. And I think I realized like how versatile I am, not just in dance, but in the dynamics of each different job because they require such different things. And the speed of working like in pop or music videos and the speed of that is so different to having time to make a whole piece and invest in that piece rehearsal over and over again. It's just completely different. So, yeah, I think there was different skills that I picked up along the way and kept going back to, kept it all fresh because I could transfer and be a bit chameleon-like in a way and kind of spit into different situations. And I guess with every new project, you must just have such a bank of material you not always the obvious stuff that you can draw on. Yeah, that's true. And so, yeah, some of the stuff that I think through Hoffesh and Larby and even Russell were helpful when I went to do movement for actors that require some animalistic styles so I could water down what I've learned and transfer it over. So that was useful. And I think a lot of people, when I started movement coaching, were like, well, what have you done? How are you movement coaching? I was like, I don't know, but I know enough information to be useful. And how to communicate that information to someone who doesn't necessarily come from a dance background. Yeah, because, yeah, you need to really break it down. I never wanted people to think they couldn't do anything, especially if it's like a small gestural movement or something like a physicalization of their character it's like you can do it we just need to find a way in and work out where your comfort zone is and you mentioned there some of the really interesting choreographers you've worked with Hoffa Schechter and Russell Manifent Sidi Labi Chikawi who has been a really significant collaborator for you yeah amazing Belgian Moroccan choreographer who not unlike the way your career has panned out, super serious European dance works, but at the same time works on big movies. Anna Karenina, I know you both worked on. What have you learned from working with him? So much. I'm so thankful to him. He actually is the catalyst, I think, for a lot of the things that have happened in the last 10 years. He's got this serene calm energy that just seems to like pass through his skin into other people and into the room and everyone I just I think he's got such a beautiful soul and he understands humanity and feelings and he's just a wonderful man I'm probably not even sure what exactly what I've learned from him but I can without a doubt say a lot Well, what's really lovely about that is the way in which when I ask that question, you don't come back with a load of technical stuff. You talk about how you work with other people. You talk about how you form a working relationship with someone. Because I think that is overall the most important thing to start with. And if you've got all that in the background, that how are you going to choreograph it? How are you going to move all of that stuff? But how you're going to present it to people and get them on board with you I think he's just managed to do it in such a way that keeps his nervous system calm which I think when you're in it you realize how important that is because it's not worth it if you're stressed yeah but also I mean when you're on a film set 
it must be quite a pressured environment. There are so many people. (laughs) And the time constraints and the money constraints are really tight. Yeah. How do you everyone, deal with everyone it? Everyone on your shoulders going, how long more? How much more time do you need? Is that the question um, that you hear all the well, time? Well, it's, let's go specifics. On the Ken dance, we had one day to shoot it. And we were like, this is not going to happen. Like, <laughs> this is just impossible. We did it, but we went into overtime. Naturally, there is this time constraint in it. And I think if you schedule yourself and all the rehearsals and being on set and have enough time on set so that you're already prepped before you shoot, then it's never really a problem. It's just you have to go in knowing you've got this much rehearsal time, this is your set time, and this is how much shoot. And you just squeeze it all in and it, yeah. And if it doesn't work, then yeah, obviously there's always a little bit of overtime. But you must be so well prepared because you can't busk it. Under no, that sort of <laughs> situation. Yeah, be like, could you just improvise that over there? And uh, can you quickly do that? Yeah, we rehearse it to a T. It's a lot of repeating. And obviously, we don't get the cast as much as we have the dancers. So the time with them is so crucial. But it's sort of like the scheduling of it all is probably the trickiest thing to work out when your full rehearsal is. Is that actor free and that actor at the same time? Can we have them together? No, no, not till the, not till the shoot. And you're like, okay, right, <laughs> I'll make that work. Yeah. And also, it's not like you were making a piece for a little contemporary dance company where, I don't know, half a dozen of you would all be in a room intensely getting to know each other really, really well. How many Kens are there in the yeah. Ken dance? How do you give them the impression that they're fully involved and give them yeah. the, no, not the impression, the real feeling yeah, the that feeling they're they are. fully involved yeah. with while still herding those cats? Yeah. So we had 40 Kens and because of the scenes that were happening and they were needed on, they were already bonding. They were already getting to know each other, which was lovely because when they got into the studio, it did feel like somehow a company for a short period of time. And the camaraderie of them all and the support was so cool. But I think if they just turned up, not done any of the scene moments together, we probably wouldn't have had much time to bond together because the rehearsals were so limited. So, yeah, but dancers are so cool. They just get to know each other like, you know, five minutes in, they're like, hey, yeah, let's get a coffee and doing some videos on the side. Like, yeah. And also dancers work fast. I think dancers' brains should be studied by all medical institutes because the amount of information you can process, how quickly you get on top of it, I still find that boggling. Me too. And I'll look at someone else and be like, God, how do you remember those lines? And they're like, I don't know. I just repeat it. And then they say that to me. I think, <laughs> oh, yeah. So sort of like <laughs> forget that that is a skill because yeah. it's so built in. But yeah, I would, I agree. That would be incredible. <laughs> and if like a piece of music that you danced to like 10 years ago, if it played, could you still remember it? That would yes. be so cool. Yeah. So like, but do you, you must get the muscle memory thing kicking in. Yeah, I I, less and less. When I create, because I have like a team with me, I can kind of like, okay, this is what I want. And then it's gone. I don't have to work my brain in the same way. But I am deciding I think I should probably keep ticking over. Otherwise, (laughs) just we'll lose all of that skill and brain power. We often think about dialogue being the thing that actually does the heavy lifting when it comes to storytelling. But as we've been talking about, you're so good at making those dance scenes tell you everything you need to know about the plot, about the characters, about where they've come from and where they're going. And I'd just like to talk for a minute about a film you made a couple of years ago, Last Night in Soho, Edgar Wright's film, set now and in the 60s the heroine gets weirdly enmeshed in a story that took place then and there are again two dance scenes that really nail the progression of the story Anya Taylor-Joy and Matt Smith, Matt Smith. Tom um, 
Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because switch. Switch. Oh, they switch in and out. It's very, very freaky. <laughs> First of all, it's quite a joyful scene on the dance floor in the 60s. It's a bit Pulp Fiction. It's a bit fossy. And then there's another one where Anya Taylor-Joy is going through a number of really of the moment modish moves. The mashed potato, the alligator. But it's joyless. And yes, exactly. The, it's a horrible, dead, hor- dead exactly yeah. that. Again, working on those kind of things, you're not just working on moves, are no, you? I do think because my progression came from movement coaching with actors and the communication I had with them of their character, it was a big shock in a way. I was like, oh, yeah, I can't just teach them a random move. Like they're not going to resonate with that and they can't believe it and it's not going to read on film all the specifics as in why they would say that sentence it has to be so clear so I think through that with mainly Elizabeth Olsen she taught me that process and obviously with Edgar Wright with all these amazing directors that they really keep the storyline as the main point and I just have to keep coming back to that I do think when they are a good actor they'll question you and they will make you find the relevant motions that suit the character and the story at the time and it keeps you on track because I'm coming from a physical background but it's definitely sitting in my imagination much more clear that these two are entwined. I feel like that's been a big learning thing for me because I've never done any acting, only as a dancer, which is kind of just naturally happening. So yeah, there was a lot to hone in on and keep reminding myself. And you've worked with such an extraordinary array of performers. Natalia Osipova, oh, yeah. <laughs> Little Buck, yes. Kylie, oh, God, yeah. Adele, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Margot and Ryan, as we've said. Is there anything that a great performer has in common whatever their discipline Ooh, i was gonna say like some sort of confidence but it's not even that it is some sort of belief in what they're doing and who they are and i think again i'm not saying something technical but i think it's like their personality of sort of knowing that they should be doing this or whatever they're doing and having total confidence in that, I think it's self-belief, some sort of self-belief because all of them are so incredible at what they do. I'd say that. At this moment, at this day, Jennifer White, you are probably the hottest choreographer in the universe. Sizzlingly <laughs> so. It's, it's amazing. The, the <laughs> building is not bursting into flames. <laughs> As we've said, you've done so many different things. Is, is there stuff that you're still wanting to explore that you haven't had a chance to do yet? I don't know. I used to write down in my diary all the things I wanted to do. And I feel like I have done that, a lot of them I've done, and even like people that I wanted to meet and work with, which feels so strange. But now I think I'd just like to continue and keep working with directors and dancers and actors that are compassionate and fully a part of humanity. (laughs) Sounds so strange. So sad, no, but, but I it's think so, it's. I mean, it's basic, but it's, it's basic. so true. It's so but, true. But, I mean, it's fundamental. Basic. It's, it's so fundamental, and I feel like no, I like the word basic. Yeah, use basic. <laughs> I'm basic. I feel like I'm so lucky. Actually, a lot of the directors I've worked with have all been really generous, and like Edgar, especially, he has taught me so much about film. He's like the film teacher and he's so generous with it and patient and also working with a female director for the first time and having was that the first that time, was first time. Oh, and, I, wow. and the sense of how she was on set and how everyone folded into her pace and her softness but like accuracy it was so wonderful and I just would love to keep working with people 
like that that bring life and love <laughs> to it all and it's not just like money 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 yeah. although because we're working in hollywood so it's kind of like <laughs> yeah, it's you've not, got to keep it's not a the, hobby <laughs> no so you keep the like actual grounded reality while you're doing something that's yeah so mainstream Jennifer, it has just been the loveliest thing to talk to you. But before we let you go, there is one last question. Go ahead. Why does dance matter to you? Oh, lovely. It feels like dance and movement are so crucial to humans letting go of trauma and letting go of emotions that even just that, I think it's a must. And having that with music is just so joyful and sharing it with other people is so liberating. I actually hate people saying they can't dance. I'm like, I will get you dancing and I'll find how you can dance. It's your self-expression. I really have such a strong feeling about that and that self-belief that deep down you are a dancer. We're all dancers. That's what I would say. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. It's been such a treat. It's been so nice to meet you. Thank <laughs> you. We're very lucky. All our guests on Why Dance Matters have been not just standout talents in their work, but also pretty decent human beings. But Jennifer was especially so. Warm, enthusiastic, and understandably bemused by being at the centre of this summer's cheeriest pop culture moment. So, our sixth season comes to a close at the movies. Have you seen Barbie? Did you like it? Please let us know. The RAD socials and links to Jennifer's work are in our show notes. And do subscribe and like the podcast so that you don't miss the start of our next season. Our guest today was Jennifer White. Why Dance Matters is made with the RAD team of Neve Carey Furness, Keisha Dodd and Katie Hagen. Our artwork is by Bex Glendinning and our producer is the very decent human being that is Sarah Miles. I'm David Jays. Take care and see you next season. <laughs> <laughs>